welcome to another video. Today it is my April sewing plans. I do have a large pile of fabrics next to me here to show you, but hopefully it is slightly more manageable than what I decided to do in March. Although a couple of these projects are very big projects and I'm not expecting to finish them them in April. I'm expecting to finish them before the end of May when I need to wear them. So without any more waffle let's get into what I have got next to me. The first one I am so excited about. Minerva Craft set, very kindly sent me this fab fabric back in I think in November or December and I have been hanging on to it since then. It is an, an reorderable fabric and they have it in three colourways but it is this amazing Lurex based brocade and I bought, I got a swatch of it, I bought a swatch of it from um, Minerva Crafts, fell in love and then was like what the hell can I make with this? Then mum and I have decided that it doesn't matter that there's no dressmakers ball this year because that was what this initially was going to be intended for. I, uh, we are going to make ourselves fancy dresses for our birthdays because mum's is the end of May and mine's the beginning and so we are going to just dress ourselves up, take ourselves out for dinner and yeah wear fancy fancy dresses so this is a lilac based floral print lurex brocade and the wrong side of it is this amazing gold color and then the right side is just it's so pretty it is so so pretty and I am going to attempt and attempt is the right word to make the Mrs. Depew gown which I will include a photo of here. Now I've bought the pattern and the pattern comes about this big and you get rulers with it that you have to print out and tape together and you use those rulers and your measurement to draft the pattern yourself. I have never done anything like this before so I have absolutely no idea if I have the skill set to do it. So I'm going to be filming myself probably messing up the process one or two times, I will be making a muslin for this dress. Now interestingly, the pattern comes with the bodice front and the bodice back, the skirt front and the skirt back. It doesn't come with those sash pieces that go across here and go in and out of the bottom of the uh, skirt portion. So i guessing I have to make that up myself, which I'm a bit scared about but I'm sure I can fudge together. So it's gonna be really interesting. Now, the because this is very gold on the back side of this fabric, what I was thinking was that I would use this for the main body of the dress and I'd use this gold for the sashing pieces because obviously it works really well and it will give them um, a lovely contrast to those, those pieces as per the line drawing. And Minerva Crafts very, very kindly sent me 10 meters of this fabric. So it's a floral digital print Lurex woven brocade dress fabric. And I've got the blue colorway, although I would say this is more lilac than blue. It comes in green and also orange. Both are beautiful. And this product is reorderable. So the fact that they sent me 10 meters doesn't mean that I've got all of it. You can get more of it. So, the only other decision that I need to make is, do I make this a floor length ball gown or do that I make this the T length or kind of mid calf length that I have been loving recently? I am aware that this is gonna be an evening dress. So it's not like if I make it calf length that I'll be able to wear it during the day, just, you know, just throw it on and wear it. It's going to be a going out dress. But will I get more wear out of it? if it's calf length rather than a full on ball gown. And the other reason that I'm asking about maybe making it calf length is I have these amazing Louis Vuitton peep toe uh, sling back bow fronted shoes. And if it was calf length, it would show these shoes off. And these are pretty much perfect for this, this, this what is going to be a dress. So I'm thinking, I'm leaning to more towards calf length because because I just don't go to balls. I've been to one in the last two years and before that I haven't been to a ball for a long time. No that's not true I went the other night didn't I but I wore I wore my red silk dress and that worked really well although everyone else there was in an evening length gown. No they weren't not all of them. Oh I don't know. Let me know what you think although I do like the idea of these 
these bad boys being on show. So yes, and there's now a gap up there. I'm gonna go put these back. Oh dear. But yes, I am really excited about this. I've been, I've been, I knew what I wanted to make with it. It was supposed to be for the dressmakers ball this year. It's not, that's not happening. So it's going to be my going out for my birthday dress. Ugh. If I can put together, put it back together so that it, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, never mind. I think now because they've sent me 10 meters. So I have a lot of this fabric, which is great because if I mess up the bodice, which is likely to happen, even if I do make a muslin, I am going to have enough to work on some more. And I do have enough to make the skirt floor length if I decide to go that route. But I'm thinking I'm gonna have enough left for a little jacket. And if you watch my PDF sewing pattern collection, you would have seen this one. It's the Ralph Pink little jacket. I love this. They don't, he doesn't have this one up for sale anymore, but he is re-releasing his older patterns uh, very slowly, so keep your eyes peeled because the, the, the long version, the cocoon coat of this is available, but the little crop jacket isn't. Now, the I'm thinking I'm going to make the main body of it in this stuff, but the collar and cuffs are turned back, so I was thinking I might add in some of this silk du peony that I got. This was supposed to be mine and small girl type creatures bridesmaids dresses for my sister-in-law's wedding but we did just didn't have enough for both of us to have the dress that we wanted so we ended up going with a peacock feather print silk cotton that I had in my stash and still have a lot of. So I have five meters of this in two separate lengths and I'm thinking that maybe maybe even if I made actually the main part of this jacket this bit in this and then did the cuffs and the collar maybe in this featured fabric that could work or maybe I line it with this so I could then because I don't think it's going to take five meters so I could possibly make a skirt out of this and then yeah line the and a little jacket and then line the yeah, something along those lines. There's going, this is going to eventually end up being a one of these Ralph Pink jackets. And this stuff is beautiful. It's kind of purple shot with royal blue. And it's got a little bit of red in there as well. So it's just really pretty in the way it catches the light. I love Silk Du Peony. I, I, as you probably know, I have a lot of it. And I'm slowly working my way through the stash. The, the ones that I've got are all bought in Saudi Arabia when we went out to visit mum and dad when they were living there. Saudi Arabian fabric shopping is mental. They have entire malls, not just one shop or one level, an entire mall dedicated to fabric shops. That's all that there is and, you can, and it's two levels and there's not just one of those, there's a couple of those. And, but this, this stuff was actually bought in the supermarket. They had a fabric section in the supermarket and it was eight pounds per meter, which is amazing. Mum, very luckily, still has a friend that lives out there so we can send orders to her and to get them to DHL it over to us if there are, you know, if we need, we need some more black silk do peony stats. And so, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's amazing. It's utterly amazing, but it's beautiful. I really love this stuff. And it's really nice to work with because even though it is silk, it's obviously seem much better behaved than the slippery stuff so yeah and I'm also planning this month's or it's going to be next month because March's set was the full circle skirt tutorial April the video that's going to go up is going to be the half circle uh, half circle skirt tutorial and May's skirt tutorial is going to be the five panel skirt tutorial I know I've been saying this for a long time and you guys have been asking for it I am going to be doing it in May and whilst this isn't a directional print it is actually quite a narrow fabric so it might be uh, I make it out of this because that's another really good way of using the five circle of using the five panel circle skirt is for narrower fabrics because that means that you can you can still make the full circle skirt on you just have it seamed and panelled so that's a possibility for this as well and then I really like that idea that I could possibly make a top out of this that would go with the jacket of this and the skirt of this but you see where I'm going you see what I'm thinking I've got so much of this fabric sat on me I'm gonna have fun folding that later so there's those ones now I don't have the fabric for this as yet 
but this month's sew along is the now and then patterns which are the patterns that are released by the till the sun goes down company uh, the lovely andre designed these and they are just beautiful mum has made the amelie shirt i keep calling it the amelia but i think it's amelie shirt twice now and has more planned um, that was the amazing pattern tra Tetris where she got the shirt out of 80 centimeter remnant from Sew Over It. And I have got the beach pajamas. Now, uh, when we were at the Knitting and Stitching, I mean, I've seen these lots of times, but we were at the Knitting and Stitching show and one of the ladies that was working on Andre's stand had one of these on and it just looks so amazing. And I was chatting to her and she said, because uh, with indie sewing companies, I like to approach them first to see if it's okay for me to do a sew along of their pattern because they may be planning something that like that themselves as a lot of them are very very active on social media and Andre was just like yes that's wonderful no problem at all um, if you would like to use some of our fabrics we can often make those available to you as well so I haven't got the fabric as yet but I will be making the now and then beach pajamas in this beautiful crazy I think it's called crazy florals aqua and uh, you will recognize this the reason that I found out about Till the Sun Goes Down was on uh, the Sew Over It channel. Lisa had bought some of this fabric, but in the yellow colourway. No, it was the white colourway, and she'd made a Doris out of it, which is amazing. And then she made a, I think it's a half circle skirt out of the yellow colourway, also amazing. And that's how I found out about the sewing company. So I love these so much. So yes, I'm going to make the beach pyjamas as this month's sew along with the crazy floral in aqua, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, yes, exciting. Okay, so this month's sew my style challenge is the marigold trousers or pit jumpsuit from Till Tilly and the Buttons. And I don't think that that pattern is for me. I think it's lovely and it looks great on other people, but I just think I... I as you know, I prefer much wider leg trousers. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make my KB wide leg trousers, which I have made lots of times. And you guys, lots of you ask where I got them from. And basically it was a ready to wear jumpsuit that I got from Dorothy Perkins. I traced the pattern off of them. And that's where that, that pattern came from. There are lots and lots of Palazzo pant options. I made some just last week. The 7131 from McCall's, that would be a good option not it doesn't have a zip on it it has elasticated back but very comfortable very practical but uh I, yes lots and lots and lots of options for palazzo trousers that's just what you want to search for wide legged palazzo pants and um lots of those will work for the the kind of look that i get from my kb trousers so i made you'll recognize this fabric i did the circle skirt tutorial from this fabric it's a crepe back satin and it's in the turquoise colorway and there's no surprise to you that i bought this color because i just love it so much now i had plans to fuss with the pattern a little bit now you know uh, you get tuxedo trousers that have a stripe going down the side i was thinking that i could add a panel to the side of my trousers where the i'd have the satin side on show and then i'd make the rest of them in the crepe side and that would look really cool and i'm still toying with that idea but i've also thought that i have some bias binding that's this color so rather than do a french seam i could seam it so that the put it start a french seam so put the wrong side of the fabric together sew it at five eighths of an inch put bias binding along that seam and then fold it over and top stitch it down so i'd end up with a bias binding strip down both legs of the trousers which would give the tuxedo kind of stripe effect but not be quite so obvious as using the shiny side of this fabric so I'm not sure which one I'm going to go for as yet but I will show you how I do it so that if any of you guys fancy giving that a try you can so there's that one the two green sweatshirting fabrics that I got at the knitting and stitching show got this cable knit one from Higgs and Higgs and I got this plush minky coated one uh, from Guthrie and Garni and I want to make toaster sweaters out of them. And I want to do it now because it's getting warmer. I still want to wear jumpers like this, but it is getting warmer. And if I don't do it now, it won't be till autumn. And I would like to have these made up and cuddly and ready for my evenings in. Because as you all know, I wear that velvet, grey velvet one and the grey fluffy one an awful lot. And I would just like 
another one or another two to add into the rotation so i've got those and they're very quick makes i've made two toaster sweaters the first one i decided was too i didn't like it because it was too boxy and too long for me so i retraced the smaller pattern size and cropped it by two inches and whilst i love that one because it's it hits in the right place it is a little bit too snug for what i want it to be so what i'm thinking is i'm going to go back to the original pattern that i traced and just lop off two inches off the bottom of that one so it's the right length but it's the boxy fit that i want because i think if it hits me just above the waist it will give me the silhouette that i want and show that i still have shape but still be comfy and nice and slouchy to wear in the evenings so that's what I'm planning for those two. I do have um, a couple of t-shirts planned for this month, but they're gonna be a, a plain red and a plain pink and a black uh, viscose jersey that I got from Minerva Crafts. They've sold out of that completely, and unfortunately that's not reorderable, so that's gone. That's, um, I think the only color that they have left in the massive range of colors is bright orange. Uh, so I won't show you those, but I'm, yeah, if I've got time, I'm gonna throw a couple of t-shirts in there. I'm gonna be working on something from my 2018 hashtag, or hashtag 2018 make nine, and it is the 9077 shirt dress. I'm straight up copying the envelope because I have this khaki green crepe that I am going to make it with. And one of you guys the other day commented on the vlog and they were like, what is khaki? As in C-A-R-K-E-Y, what, what is that? And it was like, oh, and, and the, the lady that commented was American and I believe you guys pronounce it khaki and it's a much more tan color for you. But for me, car this is khaki green and khaki green is the new, the new thing. <laughs> but yeah, I'm straight up copying the, the envelope, the pattern envelope. Now, I'm gonna make some changes to this. The button placket only comes down to crotch level and I'd like it to be a full up a full button up shirt dress so I'm going to increase the placket right down to the bottom of the skirt and split the skirt at the front. I am not going to be sewing the darts on the outside like they've done here. I just don't like the way that looks. I think I'm going to make a sleeveless one so I'm going to be doing the bodice of view A and then the, the skirt of view C. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a yoke in at the back because I just like the way that looks with shirt dresses. So yeah, a lot of these changes are inspired, inspired by Emily Holman. If you have watched my vlogs, you'll probably be sick of me talking about her, but uh, she's made three of four of these now and I love every version that she's done and she's made these changes. She's added in the yoke. She has made it full, a full button down and yeah, tweaked a few bits and pieces. So I'm gonna be attempting this one and that will be another one crossed off my 2018 make nine which is great i'm also planning on using some of my leftover savannah crepe for the the yoke at the back and and the any other interior kind of facing pieces maybe for the collar stand but i'm not sure about that because i will probably be wearing the collar open but Yes, I'm excited to get that one made up because I love that pattern so much. I think it's lovely. And then finally, I've only got half of the fabrics here to show you, but you will remember this from my fabric haul from Lanzarote. I got two meters of this heavyweight twill. It has a twill texture to it and it's intended to be bags. So this is going to be the Luna collection of bags. I may attempt one of those this month if I have time, but if I don't, the I need a new handbag. I had a slight disaster the other day, which if you've watched my vlogs, you'll know about. Um, so I have two patterns here, and I'm part of the Bag of the Month Club, and this month's bag is the Celine bag. And this is a very roomy tote bag, but it's billed as a tote bag with the look of a handbag, which I love. And so I'm gonna make that in this, and I have some green faux leather on the way, which I don't have yet, but it's on its way, which will be a part of this, as well as the Luna bag collections. So I'm gonna make that one. And then I'm going to attempt the Chris W Designs Penny In Clutch purse so you you guys all know how much i love the ncws and i have made loads of those but i fancy giving something different a try i bought this pattern 
a good year and a half two years ago and I've not made it as yet Chris is coming out with a video tutorial that's going to be out very very soon I'm hoping it's going to be this month so I can have some help walk, walking me through this but if I if it's not it's not the end of the world um but yeah I'm excited and it's going to be a matching one in this and the green faux leather some of the insides are going to be some some form of quilting cotton to just for ease of sewing through the many many layers that they end up with towards the end of the bag making process so yes that is all my selfish sewing i am also going to be making my i've i've upped the amount of necessary clutch wallets available on my patreon to three a month because i had so many of you guys interested in the first in the first month's uh offerings uh, which was amazing so it's, i've upped it from two to three which i'm hoping i'll get done over a couple of days so it's for the the lovely claire from beautiful things for tracy and for karma now you guys have all sent me a list of kind of colors that you like prints that you like fabrics that you like of what you would like uh them all kind of created into so i'm going to be putting together little photographs for you of the stuff that i have available and what i think is going to work together and i'll be sending those off and then towards probably second third the probably third week in april i'm going to be getting those made up so that i can get them sent out for the end of april and i'm really excited i'm really really excited to be making those for you guys so yeah, i'll be doing those and i also need to make small girl type creatures uh christmas present and birthday present christmas present because it's going to be a coat with some beautiful plaid that i got from stone fabrics and i didn't want to uh muslin that without her here for a fitting and she's coming back in may so i'm going to start the muslin process for that but the actual coat won't be sewn until may and she's also she's going to have a giant large size necessary clutch wallet made to match that fabric which i'm very excited about so that's that's my april sewing plans there are a few other things i have put on my list but i'm not going to say them because you've either heard about the project before or i really don't think that i'm going to have time to do it but it's on there to remind me that i want to want to get it done so yes there may be a few other ones that pop up as there were in march there were a lot of random extra projects that happened in March but uh, yeah I uh, really hope you have enjoyed today's video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon bye